All right, in this next tutorial, we're going to make a Celtic Trinity knot in Illustrator. It uses a few really basic tools, the ellipse tool, the uh, reflect transformation, the um, divide pathfinder, and the unite tool. It makes this really lovely design, which looks just like this. All right, let's go check it out. Here we go. All right, so um, start a new document in Illustrator. It can be any size. I'm using 1920 by 1080. You can use letter size. It doesn't really matter. Most importantly, though, is go to the View menu and show the grid, and the View menu and Snap to Grid, and zoom in really close to one of these uh, major grid squares. Uh, we're going to start this off by using the Ellipse tool. Um, what I don't want is I don't want to have a fill for this. It's going to make things really difficult once we start to divide things up with the uh, Pathfinder. So uh, go to here to the bottom of your toolbar where you have your fill and your stroke icons and click on the fill icon so it's in the front and you can click on the none keyboard shortcut. Now you can also use the slash mark uh, to do that as well. Also, just want to point out that if you type X on your keyboard, uh, that will swap your fill and stroke color. So if you're a keyboard person uh, like I am, uh, you can uh, just use X to change your foreground. I mean, I'm sorry, your stroke and your fill. Next thing we're going to do is take the ellipse tool and we're going to draw a circle within one of these one by one grid squares. We could certainly make it larger. We could do a two by two. It doesn't really matter. Just all we need is a a circle to begin with. You're going to take the white arrow and you're going to select just the bottom portion of the circle. Now most importantly when you use this tool um, this is going to delete line segments and anchor points. Um, so you want to make sure that you start below the horizontal center of the circle and make sure that you extend all the way below uh, the bottom of the circle to make sure that you get all the pieces that you want and ensure that you don't get these pieces. So once you've made your selection over the bottom half, hit the delete key on your keyboard and now you're left with a semicircle. And we're going to use this as the foundation to make our Trinity knot. Uh, take your black arrow and click on the line segment. It might be a little tricky because you're in snap to grid and the cursor will have a tendency to want to snap to one of these intersections. And then what I'd like you to do is go to your reflect tool uh, and the Reflect tool is usually associated with the Rotate tool, so that's where mine is. And you can also see that it has the keyboard shortcut of O. Um, either way, uh, get to the Reflect tool, and anytime they're using a transformation, you're going to see that a little uh, target point pops up in the middle of your selected object. But what we want is our reference point to be down here in the bottom right. So you're going to hold your Alt key down or your Option key down if you're on a Mac, and you're going to click on the bottom right hand corner of this semicircle. And you're going to have the reflect dialog box pop up. Now for an angle, what we want is minus 30 degrees. And what that's going to do is it's going to reflect this along a 30 degree angle that's essentially going in this direction. And you can just click on copy and now you'll have uh, a secondary copy, reflected copy, of this semicircle. Now we're going to repeat the steps that we just did by going from the left hand side of this. So you're going to select the original semicircle. You're going to go to the reflect tool, hold the alt or option key down, and you're going to click on the bottom left point. And in here, we're just going to reverse this and make this 30 degrees and click on copy. All right, so the first one was minus 30, the second one was positive 30. All right, so now we have the foundation for our knot. We're going to do some uh, changes to the style of this. Uh, we're going to make it a little bit thicker and check the in and change the endpoints, and then we'll be ready to uh, do our pathfinder. So you're going to select um, all three lines, and you're going to open up the stroke panel. You can certainly use the properties panel, which is over here. I just tend to I'm old school, so I just use uh, the panels as the way they have been presented to me. Uh, for the past 20 plus years. Uh, I'm going to click on show options so I can see all of my options. 
And what I want to do is I want to change the weight from one point. I want to change it all the way up to about 18 points. So it's nice and thick. Let's go to 20 points. It's up to you, however thick that you want it to be. Um, now, you can see that there's some gaps here. Um, and what I want to do is I want to change the way that these line segments end so I can have kind of these pointed tips on here. Now, in the stroke panel, you're going to see there's three types of caps. You have the butt cap, which is uh, the way it's ending right here, where it just really ends at that point. You have a rounded cap, uh, which will create a round here, and it'll also make our where this joins rounded. But what I want is a sharper join. So we're going to use the projecting cap, and then we're going to do some deleting after we're done uh, with the Pathfinder to make these nice sharp corners. So you're going to choose the projecting cap here. The next thing to do is select all three lines again, go to the object menu, path, and we're going to outline the stroke. And what that does is takes away the thickness of the line and then creates just a illustrator shape from that thickness. So I'm going to click on outline stroke. And now you're going to see that I no longer have the path that's in the middle of these points, but I have a shape that's outlining the that thickness of that line. Um, while these are still selected, I like to type D on my keyboard to get back to my um, default colors of a white fill and a black stroke. Um, just makes things easier to see uh, with the next steps. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to divide this up into uh, all the pieces where this overlaps. To do that, I'm going to go to the Window menu and click on uh, Pathfinder. And I want to use the Divide Pathfinder tool. So go ahead and click on Divide. And you're going to see now that anywhere that this overlapped, um, I now have its own shape. Now, two things happen when I use the Pathfinder uh, tool here. One, it, it gets all grouped together. And two, any area that was bounded by some shapes becomes a shape itself. So these areas here uh, that um, are in between are actually an unpainted shape. So we're going to do two things. First, we're going to ungroup this, so object menu and ungroup. And then we're going to clean this, clean up our drawing so it deletes all of these in-between shapes. So object menu, path, and cleanup. And the one thing that we want is unpainted objects, so make sure that that's checked, and click on OK. And you won't see a difference on the screen, but what you will see here on your toolbar is that now everything's selected, just it has the white fill and the black stroke. Now we're ready to do our final touches. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of things that we don't need. And that's all these points here that uh, go beyond our actual path. So these little triangles um, at each corner you can delete. So I'm just selecting these. I'm holding my shift key down to select more than one at a time. And select these two and delete. And now I'm ready to put the whole thing together. And for this, I'm going to use the Unite Pathfinder tool. Uh, and what I want to do is I want to unite this piece to this intersection here, to this piece here, to this intersection, and this following strand. So one, two, three. I'm holding my Shift key down. Four and five. Right. So these five and unite. And then I'm going to go to the right hand side. This piece, two, holding my shift key down, three, four, and five, and unite. And then one, two, three, four, five, and unite. And there you have it, your Trinity Knot. Um, and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. Please like and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video. Nick the Punk Fish, out.